Hello and welcome to the Cloud Inspired channel. So this video will focus on learning the differences between Active Directory on-premise and Azure Active Directory in the cloud as an identity. We will take a look at the whole IT landscape from the early days of traditional Active Directory on-premises right up to the current cloud identity using Azure AD. How it has evolved over time with the introduction of applications in the cloud and importantly, how they both fit together now in our IT landscape from both a traditional AD perspective, using applications in the cloud and keeping the same user accounts and passwords for identity in a hybrid environment. We will also cover Azure Identity Protection, which uses AD Threat Intelligence to determine when a user's sign-ins are risky and can block depending on risk level and policy and conditional access where we can control user access to a resource and they must complete an action such as multi-factor authentication. So please subscribe to the channel and click the notification bell to get all notifications of future posted videos. Thank you. So let's talk first about traditional Active Directory. So Microsoft first introduced the world to Active Directory back in 1999, and they released it alongside Windows 2000 Server Edition as a directory service. So a directory service is a database of objects such as users, groups, and computers. So physically, Active Directory would be installed on a physical server or can be a virtual machine, and the AD database contains a schema and all the objects such as users, groups, and computers. And we will use replication to replicate those objects over to other installed domain controllers, or DCs for short, for fault tolerance and redundancy. So if one DC were to go down and fail, then users can still log in and there will be no downtime. So Active Directory replication, it's a method of transferring and updating Active Directory objects from one DC to another domain controller. So this isn't just limited to a single local site, so this can span multiple sites and locations where connections between DCs are built based upon their location within a forest and a site. So each site in Active Directory contains one or more subnets which identify the range of IP addresses associated with that site. So by mapping uh, the IP address of a DC to a subnet, uh, Active Directory knows which DCs are in which site and connections are configured between sites to ensure that uh, Active Directory objects are replicated between the sites. So logically, organisational units, or OUs for short, can be structured within AD using Active Directory users and computers to create OUs, um, like a folder to form a structure, i.e. Uh, company name, departments like sales, um, support, uh, administration, and then we can group um, these objects uh, into i.e. users or groups, uh, computers into each OU to form this structure. Group policy can then be applied to each OU to implement specific configurations for users and computers like configuring operating system security, adding firewall rules or managing applications like a Microsoft Office or a browser. We can then communicate with a directory using LDAP, using protocols like Kerberos, NTLM and other servers not promoted as a domain controller would join a domain. And also end user devices like PCs, laptops would join the domain also. And this would then create a computer listed in Active Directory under the computers OU that has just joined the domain. So you would end up with this structure of computers that have joined the domain in the AD database. So each DC that contained Active Directory was normally present in an office location or data center. So we will call this on-premise. So users would come into the office each day, power up their device, PC, laptop, etc., and then log into the AD domain with their user account that was created within AD. So users log into AD with their identity and everything is trusted within AD as a local identity provider in those office or data center locations. So Active Directory Domain Services, so it uses domain name system DNS, name resolution services to make it possible for, for clients to locate uh, domain controllers and for the domain controllers that host the directory service to communicate with each other. Okay, so that covered a high level overview of Active Directory. So now let's progress a little bit into the next section and talk about the issues we now face with applications in the cloud and on-premise identity in AD.
OK, so now to recap from the previous section. So we have our on-premise identity in AD. Users are logging into AD in a local office environment. Active Directory is running on-premise in servers called domain controllers, and each DC is a, contains a catalog of users and computers that are all authorized to access resources on the network. So users authenticate to DCs via Kerberos or NTLM authentication. So when cloud applications were introduced, local AD as our identity provider didn't stretch to the cloud, so they were not linked in any way. So therefore, how would users log into the cloud apps uh, using the same identity and credentials as on-premise Active Directory? So we don't want separate credentials and lots of different user accounts. That would just be an administrative nightmare. So we want to use the same credentials and identity from anywhere. So we want to use single sign-on or SSO for short, so we don't have to log in twice. We want one login. We don't want multiple accounts and passwords everywhere. We want one identity for everything. So it sounds great, doesn't it? Well, let's introduce Azure Active Directory to make this all happen. Let's take a look at the next section. So let's introduce Azure AD to our diagram and discussions. So what is Azure AD? So it's a flat database. It's a flat structure of users and groups. So we don't have any domain controllers. We have no OUs. OK, and it's not a structured environment similar to on-premise AD. They are completely different. Azure AD is a cloud service that provides administrators with the ability to manage end-user identities and access privileges, of course, in the cloud. This is done using access tokens to identify the granted permissions. So there is no support for NTLM or Kerberos. Azure ID authentication only supports modern authentication protocols like OAuth, SAML and OpenID Connect. There's also no support for LDAP either. So you might be thinking, how do I get my on-premise uh, identity um, in Active Directory to the cloud? So, you know, how can we form that, that single identity? One login, one identity for everything. So in the next section, we're going to talk about something called AD Connect. Um, and how to synchronize users and groups to Azure AD to enable this. There's also a Microsoft article on comparing Active Directory to Azure Active Directory. Uh, there's a neat little table comparison um, showing the differences. Um, it's classed as, a, a, as an identity as a service. So this table, it compares uh, the use of AD Connect to sync identities. Uh, it talks about external identities using Azure AD B2B, um, groups to grant permissions to resources um, using RBAC role-based access control. Also covers PIM, privileged identity management, providing just-in-time access, uh, time-restricted access for account permissions, conditional access across apps, um, SAP app support using OAuth2, SAML for authentication, and the Intune support for mobile devices. So Azure AD Connect is Microsoft's solution to enable hybrid Windows AD and Azure AD deployment. So Azure AD Connect syncs uh, users and groups between the on-premise domain controllers and the cloud. So it also provides password hash synchronization, pass-through authentication and federation. This then solves the problem and allows users to have the same user ID and password on-premise and also in the cloud to access all those cloud applications using single sign-on. So this is great for ease of management of user accounts. So we have a single identity or account in both on-premise and the cloud, not multiple, which would be uh, an administrative nightmare. So we would install AD Connect on a server, either on-premise or in the cloud to synchronize our users and groups to Azure AD. So there are videos in the channel showing step-by-step -step guides on how to do this using password hash synchronization for hybrid identity sign-in. You can use this feature to sign into Azure AD services like Microsoft 365. So you sign into the service by using the same password you use to sign in to your on-premise Active Directory instance. Azure AD Connect synchronizes a hash of the user's password from on-premise Active Directory instance to cloud-based Azure AD. We can also add a custom domain in the Azure tenant. In this case, it could be cloudinspired.com and have AD Connect sync up and running. 
So links are in the description going through a step-by-step -step, uh, guide installing AD Connect and a custom domain setup if you need them. So once we have our identity synced in the cloud, we can now cover cloud apps in the next section. Oh, and by the way, it's actually good to, to mention here, this is normally a one-way sync from on-premise AD to Azure AD. So it's not normally back the other way except for something called password write back. So password write back is where users change their password in the cloud and want that same password uh, on premise. So it'd be bad if they, they become out of sync. So we have in place what's called password write back where the change in password uh, in the cloud is written back to on premise AD. So if a user was, say, in the office and logged into a PC connected to the network, that password change with password write back would also allow the passwords to remain identical. It's also worth a mention we can use the new Azure AD Connect cloud provisioning agent, which is a lighter weight agent with no SQL Server and it's a separate product to AD Connect. With AD Connect, provisioning runs on the on-premise sync server. So configuration is stored on the on-premise synchronization server. With Azure AD Connect Cloud Provisioning Agent, the provisioning configuration is stored in the cloud and it runs in the cloud as part of the Azure AD provisioning service. So the Cloud Provisioning Agent provides high availability and it's crucially it can make it much easier for organizations going through mergers and acquisitions to synchronize to a single Azure AD and Office 365 tenant. So we can use federated single sign-on such as OAuth, SAML and OpenID Connect to integrate with our Azure ID identity. So this allows us to build new applications in the cloud. We can browse the Azure ID gallery and add applications here. So we can then configure um, custom attributes like SAML and SSO for example. Or we can use pre-configured apps like Office 365, Outlook, Exchange Online, Teams, etc. to enable and use our new synced cloud identity to log into these applications seamlessly using single sign-on. Okay, good. So we are now in Azure AD in the cloud and we can see our on-premise synced users to Azure AD that are synced using AD Connect. If we now drill down into test user one at cloudinspired.co.uk, we can assign a, an E5 license. This will give us all the license options listed, including popular apps in the cloud, such as Word, Excel, Outlook, Teams messaging uh, with voice, etc. So let's now go to office.com and we sign in with this identity. So if we sign in with test user one at cloudinspired.co.uk, we also have MFA conditional access also enabled. Now we can simply launch the Teams app and get full functionality within the cloud. Azure AD Identity Protection is built in with the correct licensing added and can protect against Office 365 security threats including risky users, risky sign-ins and can detect risk. This can occur with phishing attacks, a typical travel from leak credentials and password spray. Identity Protection uses AD Threat Intelligence to determine whether a user sign-in is risky and can block depending on the risk level and policy. Again, there's a video in the channel given an introduction step-by-step -step guide on identity protection. Link is in the description. Conditional access can be used with Azure AD to create policies. So this can control, for example, if a user wants to access a resource, then they must complete an action. An example, a user wants to um, access an application and is required to perform multi-factor authentication to access it, i.e. entering a username and password, and then approving a second authentication on a mobile phone to gain access for security. Or a certain country is not allowed access to an application, we can block this using a conditional access policy.
So users are remote, so they can be anywhere to access cloud applications over the internet. So how do we manage these devices now that they are not um, confined to a single location? Well, instead of traditionally joining those devices to an on-premise Active Directory, we can now join them to Azure AD, and we can manage them through Intune or Endpoint Manager. So we can apply policy here and roll our applications, etc. So videos covering this are in the channel, showing part one, a step-by-step -step guide on how to enroll Windows 10 devices to Microsoft Endpoint Manager for device management. We walk through the process manually and also automatically using Autopilot by a hybrid joining a device so it's visible and joined to both on-premise AD and Azure AD. We show obtaining the hardware hash of the Windows 10 device and then importing this into Endpoint Manager so the device can be automatically registered and built with the assigned policy to that device. The idea being is that the registration is performed by the OEM, reseller or distributor from which the devices were purchased or the registration can be also done within your organisation by collecting the hardware identity and uploading it manually. Also shown is the configuration of hybrid Azure AD join in the AD Connect to register devices from on-premise AD to Azure AD and the Intune Connect which creates uh, autopiloted enrolled computers in the on-premise Active Directory domain. And then part two of the video goes through application delivery using Endpoint Manager. So yeah, check the videos out if you haven't already. Links are in the description. Thank you very much for watching the video. Please don't forget to subscribe to help grow the channel and get notification of future up and coming videos. Okay, take care and bye for now.